Hello, is that Peter? Peter from Fragrance View. Hi, yeah, it's, uh, it's Mr. Smelly from the Mr. Smelly channel. Hi, yeah, uh, your number, yeah, yeah, I got it from the uh, Offshore Divers directory. Now, as you may have heard, I'm going to be releasing a Mr. Smelly fragrance. I was wondering, maybe, would you be interested in being the perfumer? Yep, uh, the kind of fragrance we're looking for. Well, we're, I'm thinking maybe uh, Aventus meets Aqua di Gio Profumo, and we're going to chuck in. A, we're going to make it very crowd pleasing. Chuck in a ton of Ambroxan, something like that. Uh, keep the cost of the ingredients pretty low. Hopefully, the price high, and we should be laughing all the way to the bank. What do you say? Hello, Peter. What, what, hello, hello. Hello everyone, welcome back to all of you in the Smelly Army. So today, an exciting subject, we're going to be looking at the top five most iconic niche fragrances of all time, in my humble opinion. Today's video is sponsored by my friends over at Fragrance Samples UK, and you can sample all of these fragrances there. It's my favourite place around the world to sample fragrances. They do sizes up from 1 to 10 mils, uh, and they come in very nice plastic atomizers and you get a lovely little pouch like that and it would be great to sample ones in this list maybe that you haven't tried because uh, these are really must try ones in the world of niche fragrances. Wherever you are in the world they can ship to you. They're in the UK and uh, 14 other countries in Europe you can just order through the website in the normal way. They've given me a discount code, Smelly Time, and that gives you 10% off everything on the website till the 5th of June. If you are in one of those countries I just mentioned, then you can just follow the link in the description. It'll automatically apply the code. If you're elsewhere in the world and you want to order, then you just need to email them at info at fragrance samples UK. That should be info at fragrance samples UK dot com. Mention my code too, Smelly Time, for the 10% off and they'll get those orders out to you. So let's get stuck into the list and see which ones I've picked. Let me know what you think of my picks and which ones you would have picked instead. The first one, no particular order to these by the way, I think this had to be in there. A recent acquisition for me and I'm so happy to have it. It's L'Air du Desert Marocaine from Andy Tower or Tower Perfumes, a 2005 release from the enigmatic and elusive Swiss perfumer Andy Tower and really a, a magical kind of scent. It is uh, supposed to evoke the scent or the aura of the air of the Moroccan desert as the name implies. Notes in this one actually are cumin, coriander, petit grain, rock rose, jasmine, cedar, vetiver and ambergris. Uh, the description of this one is really hard because it's very difficult to pick out individual notes I find. I suspect that I smell a bit of lavender in there, but other people have said that's nonsense. I definitely get some incense or the suggestion of incense and others mentioned that one. It's certainly very woody and it's got a sort of a spicy, woody, incense-esque mixture with some sweetness and a really kind of long-lasting quality about the fragrance. and a, a, very wearable actually. I, I get a hint of the barbershop about it, but a sort of barbershop crossed with this kind of magical air of Moroccan spice. And it's so clever, so complex and so brilliant. Very much a unisex fragrance, I think, as a lot of niche ones are, and a total, total classic. You've got to sample this if you've never tried it, and it's one that you don't see in every shop at all, so sampling is really the way to go. You're not going to stumble into your local department store that does Creed and everything else very often and find this one. So L'Air de Desert Marocaine. It really hailed the beginning of the era of the indie niche perfumery world uh, with the, you know artisanal or independent perfumers, not the big niche houses like Creed. And it's recognized widely as a, a total classic for good reasons. So that's my first pick. On to the next one. I don't own all of these because with niche fragrances they're a little bit polarizing and there are some that you may or may not like, that's why sampling them is wise. So the next one I'm gonna pick, picture appearing on the screen now, thank you to Fragrance Samples UK for the sample from which I have sprayed onto this card. It's Tuscan Leather from the house of Tom Ford. For me, I was, you know, I was thinking, which one should I mention from Tom Ford? I think Tuscan Leather is perhaps the biggest hitter in men's niche fragrances from them, the one that we all kind of remember and have an opinion about. Uh, the notes for Tuscan Leather are Saffron, Raspberry, Thyme, Olibanum, Night Blooming Jasmine, Black Suede and Amberwood. Uh, it's fruity, 
it has a very leathery note, a very modern leather note. I think the aroma chemical used is called suede oil. You'll notice that in uh, YSL's Noble Leather, I think as well, Aqua de Palma's Colonial Leather has it too. But this was the most notable example, maybe. Released in 2007, one of the originals from the private blends from Tom Ford, perfume at Harry Fremont. It's fruity. It's musky, it's sexy, it's very masculine. Some people say it smells a lot like cocaine. Now, I honestly have never tried cocaine. I I'm not into drugs, don't like the idea of them, but that could be a good thing, depending how you feel. Very, very pungent, and it's got this very prominent masculine leather note, but it does have a sweetness, and this, this kind of fruity jars, jarsbury, raspberry element as well in there very kind of in your face some people find it a bit synthetic and i'm not sure how i feel about that particular suede leather modern niche leather note but this was the pioneer of that it's very recognizable very much a polarizing scent the reason i don't own it one of them i'm not sure about it and whenever i ask other people when i've asked claire from the smurfy girly channel they don't tend to girls particularly i don't think particularly go for this fragrance that much it's more of a man thing that men like the way it makes them feel kind of masculine scarface esque you've got to try it though it's really polarizing i'm sort of one of those few people who's just in the middle it's okay try it before you buy it see if you like it tuscan leather tom ford i think it's an iconic legend of the niche fragrance world next up then well, I'm going to do a kind of an honourable mention and then bypass to another one from this house. I, it would be disingenuous not to mention Creed's Aventus. I've got a small 30ml bottle. I also have a decant. Some of the notes include bergamot, apple, blackcurrant. Can I remember them all off the top of my head? Pineapple, birchwood, jasmine, vanilla, patchouli. I'll leave it there. So it's a, a really fresh, zesty citrus opening with this kind of uh, smoky undertone to it. If you haven't tried Aventus by Creed, it's, it's almost not even niche now because it's so popular and there's so many clones of it. But if you haven't tried it, then you really should buy a small sample and, and see what you think. It is uh, it is a must try. But we go on about it so much that I thought it wouldn't be so fun to dwell on it. Also, there are so many great clones, as I mentioned, and a one that I have uh, been sent recently is Emperor by Parfums Vintage, that's Pineapple Vintage Emperor. I've also got the extract version, this is the normal Eau de Parfum. I think that might be the closest clone I've got to my 2015 batch so far, and performance is amazing. You can also sample that one at Fragrance Samples UK. They do have uh, most of the Parfums Vintage range there, so see what you think about that. The one I've actually chosen to officially include, I've cheated, haven't I? I've done two. Green Irish Tweed from 1985. Apparently the perfumer is Pierre Bourdon, who also did Cool Water for Davidoff a few years later, which was very similar in smell, but probably a lower budget. And to me, this is iconic. The name is evocative of something rather classy and wonderful. It's the only one that goes right back to the, the 80s in our list today, and it stood the test of time. Uh, the notes on this one include lemon, lemon verbena, iris, violet leaf, sandalwood and ambergris it's crisp it's grassy it's got a really bright opening it sort of makes you think of freshly cut grass it's also got this very strong kind of dehydromersonol note that was crucial also in cool water later probably influenced platinum egoist from chanel very much the smell of the spring air many feel it symbolizes a walk in the irish countryside it's an absolute classic influenced so many other fragrances very crisp very elegant and a brilliant brilliant niche scent and yeah you have to sample that one if you haven't already guys so green irish tweed for me gets that place in the hall of fame iconic fragrance list next up then another one that i don't actually own a bottle of uh, so i've just sprayed for my sample from fragrance samples uk on, onto this piece of paper very polarizing and it's interlude man from amouage otherwise known as the Blue Beast. You notice some of these even have nicknames. Aventus is called the King. Laird of Desert Marocain, you can just abbreviate L-A-D-D-M. People know what you're talking about. They're that famous in the fragrance community. G Green Irish Tweed, G-I-T. This one, the Blue Beast. They've got nicknames or abbreviations. They're that famous. That's why they're in my list. Interlude Man, then. Very potent, smoky, uh, incense and smoke kind of fragrance from the House of Amouage. Gives a real... Uh, let's say uh, the, the fragrance company themselves I think say it's a sort of symbolizes chaos of different notes clashing and then somehow working really well uh, the notes are bergamot oregano allspice 
amber, a pop and axe, incense, cistus, leather, oud, patchouli and sandalwood. It's incredibly rich, woody and smoky and it is beast mode in performance. All of the ones I've mentioned so far, quite good performance. GIT, just quite good. Laird of Desert Moroccane, very, very good. Aventus, kind of okay. This one, definitely beast mode. Smoky, heavy, in your face, touch of oud, patchouli, a pop and axe, complex, spicy, woody. In your face takes over the room i've got numerous cards sprayed i'm mainly getting a mixture of tuscan leather and this one so they're the two really strong ones tuscan leather i find very strong from tom ford and interlude man is an in your face typical amorage type fragrance of of course an arabian house got that middle eastern feel and again a lot of people won't enjoy it it is very much niche in the true sense of the world but it, it's iconic it's famous for good reasons so uh, interlude man from the House of Amouage definitely makes my list. I think we just have one or two places left. Let's see. Yeah. So the last one on the list is going to be Baccarat Rouge 540, and this is from the House of Maison Francis Kerjan. Let me know if you think it's worthy of inclusion. I decided that it is. I've got the official sample there. You do a lot better to get the sample from Fragrance Samples UK. You can get a nice five or 10 mil for a pretty good price, I would say. So notes on this one are jasmine, saffron, amberwood, ambergris, fir resin, and cedar. Most people talk about the following things with this one, burnt sugar, candy floss, florals, and a sort of salty ambergris freshness. It's, I think this one, I'm, it's, I'm really kind of growing to like this one a lot, and I'm thinking maybe I need it in my collection. This one will be a crowd pleaser for a lot of people, very much unisex actually. We're kind of thinking about men's fragrances because my channel, in terms of the viewership, is mostly a sausage party. It looks like that. There's an uh, extractor parfum version as well. Both perform very well. This one a little bit more light and fresh. That one a little bit more heavy. It's beautiful. It, it gives the air. You can think of candy floss, which doesn't sound very sophisticated, but there's this lovely kind of woody crispness and something of that that salty sea air, even ambergris note underneath that. And it is absolutely delightful. It's from the perfumier Marc, Ma he's not called Maison, is he? It's from Maison Francis Kerjan, and the perfumer is Mr. Francis Kerjan, the man who did Jean-Paul Gaultier La Malle back in the mid 90s. This is really, really a popular modern niche scent. And I think everyone out there should try it. It's sort of semi gourmandish, captures the, the zeitgeist of our time that we're living in this modern time when things have to be a little bit more sweet and crowd pleasing for a lot of people rather than the more challenging smells, the interlude mans that not everyone wants, but it is really masterfully done. So Baccarat Rouge 540 makes my list of iconic niche fragrances. Let me know what you thought of my picks. If you'd like to, please head on over to my Smelly Army Private Members Club on Patreon. The link is in the description below. It's only $2 a month for an extra video every week. I'd love to see you in there. If not, I'll see you in the next video here on YouTube. Don't forget to check these out at Fragrance Samples UK. Use the code SMELLYTIME for your 10% off. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>